You can't just kill a man, Sabrina said. You're a police officer. You're a police officer. Police officer? Nottingham laughed. Child, do you think I took this job because I care about justice? Your precious woman is being put to, for crimes against ever afters. If my th theory is correct, when he expires, your wretched family will vanish just like that. He snatched his fingers so loudly that Daphne jumped in fright. I wonder if I'll remember you when it's all said and done. It would be a shame if I didn't. When do you plan to do this? Grandmother asked. Midnight tonight! A voice shouted through a megaphone. The crowd separated and Mayor Hart stepped front and center. Tonight I made good on my campaign promise of changing everything. I bet you didn't guess just how much change I had planned. It's going to be quite a celebration, folks. Everyone is invited. Nottingham lets out a wicked laugh as he glared at the Grimm family. Aren't you going to tell us we'll never get away with this? The crowd roared with laughter. I thought it was understood, Granny Rhoda said calmly. The family pushed their way through the mob and out into the street. Uncle Jake was waiting by the car when they arrived. Is he in there? He asked, pointing back toward the jail. Granny nodded. Heaven only knows how he got here. Sabrina and Daphne shared a look, but kept quiet. What are we going to do? Sabrina asked. Yeah, I don't want to not exist. I've got plans, Daphne added. We're going to do what every groom has done in times of trouble. We're going to walk together as a family. Mr. Kenneth, take us home. We have to rally the troops. You want to what? Uncle Jake said, leaping from his seat on the family couch. I want you to tell Baba Yaga that Nottingham has a wand and lead her to the police station, Granny said. Charming Kenneth, Sabrina, Daphne, and Puck, and even Elvis seemed shocked by Granny's plan. They gazed at one another in disbelief. One heaven for? Uncle Jake asked. We're going to send her as a distraction, the old woman explained. If you can cause enough of ruckus, Nottingham won't hear Mr. Kenneth knocking down the back wall so we can break Warham out of his cell. Puck clapped his hands. A jailbreak! I love it! Uncle Jake, however, stood shaking his head. Mom, mutual trust is the only thing keeping Baba Yaga from adding up all of us to her bone fence. If you lie to her, things will get ugly. Things are ugly, Mr. Kenneth said. Desperate times, son. I know the consequences, the old man said, but the alternative is much worse. Personally, I think your job sounds a lot more fun than mine, Puck complained to Uncle Jake. I'm sorry you feel that way, Puck, Granny said, but your task is the most important. What about us? Daphne said as she rubbed Elvis's chin. The big dog would watch Granny Rhoda attentively as if waiting to find out what his role in the plan would be. You girls are going to stay with me. I may need your help getting Warham to safety, Granny said. But there's a hole in your plan, General, Charming said. General? Granny Rhoda said. The girls and Charming shared a look. I mean, what are you going to do with Warham when you get, to, when you get him? You won't be able to hide him here. Nottingham is going to know who is responsible. Granny shook her head. I don't know. All I do know is that if we don't rescue him, the Queen is going to kill him, and then my family is going to cease to exist. Now, I was suspecting it would take Jacob a couple of hours to find Baba Yaga and lure her into town. I suggest you all have something to eat and get some rest. But this is probably going to be a long night. After everyone had eaten what they could, Granny retired to her bedroom and Puck went to his. Uncle Jake went off in such a Baba Yaga and Charmy retreated into his mirror, leaving Mr. Kenneth and the girls alone. The old man sat quietly, studying the girls. His face looked as if he were wrestling with a question. Sabrina knew what it would be and dreaded having to answer it. How do you tell someone he is going to be taken over by a monster and lose his soul? Can I do anything to stop it? Mr. Candace asked finally. 
looking down the sharp black talons on his hand. Yes, Daphne said. Sabrina, on the other hand, wasn't so sure. Kenneth had been creeping toward a complete metamorphosis since his fight with Rumpelstiltskin in the tunnels beneath the town since several months ago. Nothing had done since had slowed his change. Still, she knew it was her best to keep her doubts to herself. Our future selves believe we could change things, and we already have a little. Do you know when it happens to me? The old man asked. The girls shook their heads. They should have asked when they had the chance. But there were so many other questions that had gone unanswered too. Perhaps if I ought to call us, I could stop it, Kenneth said. That's what you're trying to do, correct? We know we've changed a few things, Sabrina said. But we have no idea if it, if it has made a difference in the future. Kenneth scarred from his chair. He repeated Granny Rhoda's advice about getting some rest and slowly climbed the steps to his room. Are we going to lose him? Daphne whispered. I don't know, Sabrina said. After a few moments of silence, the girls went up to their room. Elvis padded along beside them and popped up onto their bed. I guess we better get some sleep, some rest, Daphne said, shutting off the light. I've got a bad feeling, Sabrina said. About tonight? No, about the future, about this case. We still haven't found the missing items, and it seems like things keep popping up to get in the way. What if we can't figure out who the thief is? What if we don't solve this mystery? What if there are things we can't change? The girls slipped their hands together and lay quietly. The darkness was like a heavy weight on their chests. Sabrina awoke to an incredible shaking. Her head felt like it was going to bounce off her shoulders. The bed seemed to be moving around the room on its own. She looked over at her sister, Daphne. Daphne, her hands closed, her eyes closed, concentrating hard. She also had a magic detector in her hand, and it was vibrating. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick, Daphne said, squirming around the bed like someone had tossed a handful of worms down her pants. What's going on? Sabrina asked, doing her best to keep the bed from careening into her father's desk. I feel like one of those time tears is about to open up again. Oh, my legs feel like pudding. Where is it going to happen? Can you tell? There's going to be one in the river. It's going to be a big one, too. Big enough for Warham ship? Mucho big -o. The shimmering and shaking stopped, and Daphne shook her arms out as if they had fallen asleep. We have to go now. Sabrina glanced over at the alarm clock on the night table by the bed. It's only 10 o'clock. We can't go now. What about Uncle Jake? We don't know if he's found Baba Yaga yet. This could be the only chance we get to send Warham back, Daphne said as she put the magic detector into her pants pocket. The girls leaped out of bed and raced into their grandmother's room. Granny Water was still resting and they had to shake her from her nap. Lieblings, for heaven's sake, Granny Rhoda cried as she sat up in bed. There's a time tear opening the river soon. We need to go now. A time what? The old man said. A whole in time, Sabrina explained. Just like the one Warham came through to get here. We need to get him back on the boat so he can sail into it and get back to where they belong. But it has to happen soon. How do you know all this? Granny, you keep secrets from us sometimes to protect us, right? Daffy asked. The old woman nodded. Well, this is our secret and you're just going to have to trust us like we trust you. Granny laughed. But girls, you never trust me. Fine, then trust us like we're supposed to trust you, Sabrina said, pulling her grandmother out of bed and down the hallway. Meanwhile, Daphne pounded on Puck's door. The ferry joined them shortly, strapped with enough of his club grenades to fire war, and everyone rushed downstairs while Candace was sitting on the couch. We have to... Granny started, but Mr. Candace held up his hand, and I heard... He replied, the car's already warmed up. What about Jacob? Charming said as he poked his head out of his mirror. He's only been gone an hour and there's no way to reach him, Granny Rhoda said. But we're going to have to try something else. Charming disappeared into his mirror and moments later returned, leading a brilliant white stallion out of the reflection. Even Kenneth, who was really surprised by anything, was stunned. 
Elvis looked up at the horse as if he were in the presence of royalty. I'll go for Jacob, the prince said as he led the horse outside. The rest of the group followed him. He mounted the creature and raced off into the night. Daphne looked over at her grandmother with a smile. Remember when you told me I couldn't have a pony because we didn't have enough room? Granny shook her head. No chance. Mr. Kenneth drove faster than he ever had. He whipped the old jalopy through the empty back roads, over the wooden bridge, bridges, and across the abandoned train tracks like he was an international race car driver. Sabrina was happy he understood the urgency of their plan. It was like times like that she wished the car had more modern safety features. She tightened the ropes that the family had installed as makeshift seatbelts around her waist. Even a usually fearless park put his arm. When they got to the town, Kenneth parked the car across from the police station and everyone got out. Puck, go ahead and take your position, Granny said. Puck's wings spread and flapped rigorously, lifting him into the air. I'll wait for you at the dock, he said, and zipped off toward the river. Kenneth nodded. What next? Unfortunately, this plan of ours was somewhat dependent upon Jacob, Granny said. We need to give Charmy some time to find him and Baba Yaga. We can't wait another second, Daphne said as she pointed to the sky. The stars seemed to have been devoured by a swirling black mass hovering high over the town. It was bigger and uglier than any Sabrina had ever seen. We've got to do this now, Granny. All right, the grandmother said. I suppose we can sneak around the back and knock a hole in the wall. At least that much of the plan could still work. No, stop, Mr. Kenneth said. Sniffing the air, there are men stationed on the top of the building and a large group of them at the, black, at the back. How many do you think? Granny said. I smell 50 of them, maybe more. They knew we were coming, Sabrina said, spotting one of the playing card soldiers peering over the edge of the jailhouse roof. She also saw the deadly broadsword he held in his hands. I can take a few of them, Kenneth said, but the three of you should wait here. Old friend, you'll never get past them all. This isn't going to work, the old woman sighed. Then what? They would go right through the front door, Sabrina said. The family turned to her. Remember our escape training? Sabrina said. Puck knew we would head for the woods, so he didn't bother to guard the path. I bet you a million bucks Nottingham thinks the same way. He would never suspect us coming through the front door. I bet the inside isn't guarded at all. Her family and friends looked at her for a long time. Their faces were filled with doubt. But suddenly, Mr. Kenneth turned across, started across the street. Let's do it. What's the plan? Granny asked as the rest of the family hurried to catch up to Kenneth. Miss Kenneth can just run through and make us a path to the cell. We'll follow him. There's going to be a lot of dust, so stay close, the old man said, and then he bolted right through the front door. His face may have appeared old and frail, but he slammed through the offices like a powerful wrecking machine, plowing through walls, overturning desks, and making his own path to the jail cells at the back of the building. The woman followed the best cells the best they could, dodging falling plaster and broken electrical lines. They held their faces under their shirts to filter out some of the debris. The blitz made a tremendous racket and would surely attract the attention of the guards outside, but Sabrina was right. Nottingham hadn't bothered to fortify the inside of the building. In no time, the group had reached the back of the building. There they found Wilhelm locked inside a small cell. The poor man was terrified by what he had heard coming toward him. He leaped from his chair, lifted it, and waved it threateningly at the group. Zurok Blieben, ich mochte sie nicht verletzen, Wilhelm shouted. What do you say? Sabrina asked. He's frightened. He thinks we've come to hurt him. Granny explained and turned to the man. Wilhelm, it's us. We've come to rescue you. Rescue? Wilhelm cried. He set his chair down on the ground and shook his jail cell bars as if to remind him of their next obstacle. Kent reached for the bars. Using his incredible... That seems to be the end of this video. I'll send more later.